I can see myself sleeping on his chest. Am I dreaming? Oh my gosh, that's so... <laughs> I got goosebumps. I thought you loved me. Or perhaps it's a nightmare. Who, who's there? Have you forgotten about me already, Dragonfly? Adrian, is that you? His voice is all around me, almost like static, but now I know it's him. You left me. I didn't. You're the one who... You can't even bring yourself to see it, can you? You know it was your fault. I wish I could just reach for myself and wake up, but I can't. I'm stuck here once again. No one could ever trust you to be brave and fend for yourself. It's not. I know. I tried to, but... Not even your own mother? I did everything to keep you safe, and you left me behind. Did you ever love me? Her voice is banging on my head, making me shiver as I clutch myself and close my eyes. Everything is gone, and I feel something dripping from my chin. But when I open my eyes, there's nothing besides the endless darkness surrounding me, yet I still feel something dripping, and the metallic smell fills my nostrils. An enormous sense of dread takes over me as I peer into the shadows and run towards nothingness, waiting for something to show up. <gasps> oh my gosh. And But all I hear is a TV turning on behind me, making me freeze in place. The static sound slowly creeps over, getting louder every second. I don't want to look back. Oh, Bram, don't look back. It's so scary. <laughs> I feel uneasy, like there's something awful behind me. My breathing speeds up, and I feel my paws starting to sweat as the sound of a static voice approaches me. His voice. Have you forgotten my face too, Dragonfly? Just like you did with theirs. I try to scream, but there's no sound. My whole body feels like static, and all I can do now is close my eyes and try to... <gasps> it's your fault! Oh my god, I'm so creepy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my goosebumps. Oh, oh my god. Oh, that was so, so scary. Oh, uh, Bram, uh, are you okay? I jolt awake. It's still dark, but my night vision adjusts, and I can see the frightened hyena beneath me. I'm sweaty, my heart is racing, and I feel a strong taste of metal in my mouth. What happened? You were crying and biting on your lips so hard, and you bled all over me. I tried to wake you up, but... Before he can continue, I just slam my face into his chest. I can't hold back my tears again. Everything was so awful. I know it wasn't real, but it felt real. I'm trembling, and I feel his arms wrapping around me, one going up to pet my head softly as I pour it all down over him. I smell blood on his fur, and I try to get up immediately, but he holds me tight. There's blood. Uh, I'm so... Shh. It's okay. Just try to relax, and we'll talk in the morning, okay? Don't worry about it. I sink my face into his neck fur, avoiding the blood I dripped over his chest, and cry myself to sleep once again. Hopefully, there won't be any more nightmares this time. Morning came with the scorching desert sun. I wake up all sweaty with my face still buried in Barrow's neck fur, so I hastily make my way out of the bed as soon as shame hits me. I get myself together again and try opening the trailer door. It's locked. Staying inside the trailer is unbearable. The scorching sun is turning it into an oven. I need to get out or I'll end up passing out. But before I turn to look around for the key, I feel a heavy paw resting over my shoulder and another pushing a key into the lock. Good morning, kid. Good morning. Sorry if I woke you up. Don't worry. I was up already. I just didn't want to wake you up. You deserve a good night's sleep. Oh, sorry. Shh, it's okay. Let's just get out of here before we cook ourselves in here. As he opened the door, I was briefly blinded by the creeping sunshine that filled the trailer, and as my eyes adjusted to the light... Ah! But before I could react, Baru had already pushed me back onto the trailer floor and kicked the huge figure in the chest, sending it to the ground. The creature felt like a statue, with some crystals shattering on the impact. Are you okay? Did you get scratched? I didn't even register what happened. 
It's fine. I was more worried about you throwing me back than I was about the Echo. And let us see here, uh, Echo is capitalized, you know, it's oddly reminiscent of, you know, Echo the VN. <laughs> Echo? Yeah, my m mom called them ghosts, but that creeped me out, so I agreed on calling them Echoes, but I've never seen one that lived that long. So you've seen them? In the colony? I get up and start to go after the specimen, a black cat affected by the crystal virus mutation. Oh, so this is the, uh, you know, the their zombies in their uh, universe. It seems that Byro doesn't know that the mutation started inside the walls of our colony, created in an attempt at a vaccine. It's best that I keep it that way for now. As I approached the cat, Byro held my paw and pulled me back. What are you doing? I scratch from those crystals and you become one of them. I'm vaccinated, aren't you? What? I didn't even know there was a vaccine. Yeah, the first one dates from before the escape, so I thought you'd be vaccinated. I mean, it improved to the point that Varga is using the crystals on soldiers, improving their strength to make sure that his rule over the colony won't be contested again. Well, I guess it wouldn't make sense to give the vaccine to future subjects in the study of the crystals. Wha who are you? And how do you know this stuff? I, I was a student of a lab assistant who tested the vaccines, so I have some knowledge of what happened here. I can't tell him I used to work directly on Varga's gruesome experiments. He's the only one I can count on right now. Hmm. He's not buying it that much. I'll need to be careful with what I say to him from now on. I don't want to be left alone in the middle of nowhere. Again... My paws are still painted with a slight rose color, reminding me of the last time I held him in my arms. And now I'm lost again, staring at my bloodied clothing. He was smiling when he told me everything would be okay. We need to get going, or else we'll end up encountering another one of these along the way. Besides, this one's been harvested, so there might be some freaks nearby. Harvested? We start walking, leaving the trailer locked with the key hidden under a stone among the small bushes. Yeah, remember when I told you that you couldn't be from the south? Well, they're a mad human cult-like settlement. Right. I'm serious. They kill us and wear our skins and bones. They worship these crystal monsters as if they were gods or some kind of spiritual being, and they even mine crystals from them to make more monsters out of us. Some people say they're immune to the virus and can use these crystals to enhance their bodies. I always thought that was bullshit until you told me about the vaccine in Vargas soldiers. God, I don't even know what to say. When we escaped, we got lost in a sandstorm and ended up splitting the group, and because of that, some of us had the displeasure of meeting the cultists. After that, Barrow kept quiet for a long time, only stopping to give me directions and rest in some shades. He guides me through a tunnel, and as we get closer to the other side, the sand starts to feel cool and damp under my feet. I can feel a water path deepen beneath me with each step. When we finally make it to the end, there's a small oasis hidden between sandstone mountains. I can hear insects and birds all over the place. I run through the water and dunk my paws in it, splattering it all over my face, trying to resist the urge to throw myself into the pond. I look back at Baro with a smile on my face. He simply smiles sweetly and keeps moving slowly along the flooded path. This place is amazing. I've pictured somewhere like this for years. It's just missing a cool breeze and... Some food, perhaps? If you haven't scared them all off, maybe we'll have fish for lunch. Ugh, oh, I'm tired and I'm starving. But can I help you with something? Just rest for now. I have something to do first. After that, you can help me catch some fish and get some lime. Okay, I'll be under some shade when you come back. I already love this place. I wish a... Oh. You wish... It, it's nothing. Hmm, I love this place too. It's my special place. One that I have never told anyone about. You're actually the third person that I bring here. Well, I'll be right back. I smile back at him and leave the pond. And looking for the perfect place to sit under the shade, I find a cold smooth stone as Baro makes his way up to the waterfall's top. The wet and fine sand beneath my feet feels like heaven compared to the hot and rough one I've been withstanding for the last few days. 
We should have worn boots. Well, we should have prepared so much more for this trip. God, I wish I could stay here forever. I slide down and sit in the sand, closing my eyes and letting my back rest against the cold stone, feeling a good chill travel through my body. Where am I? Attention passengers, last call for flight 613 to Morocco. Please embark on platform D12. I repeat, last call. Ah, now I remember. I was crying that day. I didn't want to move. I thought Dad would come back and find an empty house. Mom helped me write a letter for him, telling him where we were going. That made me feel better, but I still didn't want to go. I made a scene in front of everyone, but instead of telling me to shut up, my mother hugged me and cried. That was the first time I'd ever seen her cry. She was as devastated as me to lose Dad and leave everything behind. I didn't understand why we were leaving or why my father hadn't returned for over a year, but she was there for me and tried her best to make sure I was happy. Even when I turned her down because I wanted my father to help me with school or show me how to ride a bike like everyone else's fathers. I remember lying about my dad being away on a trip to the Caribbean or something because I was jealous of my classmates from the online classes. This helped me feel better. And I think that at some point, I began to believe my own lies, turning them into bigger ones until my teachers called my mom and told her about it. I remember that she told the teacher over the phone that she couldn't afford a therapist, but would do her best to make me feel better. And in the next week, a man stopped by the door and he told mom we had to leave. At the time, I had no idea what a the therapist was, much less that my mother was in debt from paying for all of my father's medical bills, making it impossible for us to continue living in the USA. And then we left. You sure have a habit of sitting on graves, don't you? What? Barrow just points to the stone I'm leaning on, and I read the names and dates on them. I jolt up and try to run away, but trip myself over something and tumble down, going straight into the pond. Why would someone dig a grave here of all places? It wasn't my choice to bury them here, but I think she deserves to rest in a beautiful place like this. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have imagined. Don't worry, kid. And I'm sorry for scaring you. I didn't know you'd end up inside the pond. Eh, I needed a bath anyway, and I wanted to clean these. If I don't, I'll end up losing my mind. I stand up and shake some water off my fur and clothes. The red spots of dried blood are dissipating slightly. Maybe I should take this opportunity to clean this, but I'm not comfortable doing that in front of him. But that one where you were sleeping is my sister's grave. She was my best friend, and... Barrow knees over the graves and places some flowers I didn't notice he had in his paws. The first time I saw you with your face half buried by the sand, I remembered the time I found her body. We got separated in the crowd and I left her with my dad. If I had just held her and guided her through the sand clouds, she would be here today. But I was scared, so I held my mom, and we ran after a group of people. However, my mother got injured, so when we set up a camp in a safe location, I had to leave without her to find my father and sister. When I found them, my dad was heavily injured, kneeling beside my sister's body with an emotionless face. We just dug Violetta's body from the sand and started walking away. I grabbed him and tried to bring him back to the campsite, but I got lost, and we ended up here somehow. Despite his injuries, he dragged those heavy stones here and dug two large and deep holes. He kissed my sister on the forehead and left her body inside one of the holes. And then, he just looked at me and softly smiled before collapsing inside one of the graves he dug. I think I already knew why he was digging that second grave, but I still stayed there, shocked. Just looking at their bodies. After what seemed like hours, I covered both of them with coarse sand and rocks, placed some flowers, and left to find my way to the camp. When my mother saw me arriving back alone, she must have known what happened because she embraced me and never asked a word about that day. At first I was angry at her, 
But as time passed, I understood her motives for not talking about it. But still, it would have been nice to have someone to talk to about that when I was growing up. He gets up but keeps gazing at the rocks that serve as grave markers. I'm sorry, Maru. I know how it feels. I lost my father to the crystal virus when I was younger. It was before the pandemic started, and they didn't have a treatment yet. For a long time, I thought he would just open the door and hug me like he did every time, but it never happened. I've never been too close to my father. He wasn't a bad father, just distant. Maybe that's why my mother seemed to forget him so easily? I don't know. You know, there's a lot of her in you, my younger sister, so I'm sorry if I was too invasive or made you uncomfortable. I just met you, and I shouldn't act as if I knew you for a lifetime. I did the same to you, so we're even. Besides, I don't mind having someone to count on, especially right now. And I know I shouldn't put that pressure on you, but... Everybody I knew is gone, so it's good to know I have someone to be around and joke with to distract me from everything else. In a way, I feel like I need you to be here for me. Thank you, Baro, for being my friend. Your best friend. My only friend. We chuckle, and then silence falls between us. It's comfortable at first, but the words we exchange start to weigh on my mind. Take off your clothes. What? What? You said you wanted to clean them and take a bath, so I thought I could help. Maybe that's too invasive. Not with a bath. With the clothes. I can clean them for you upstream while you take a bath down here. I'll leave them to dry for some time. With that sun, it will take less than half an hour. You can stay some time under the sun to dry too. I won't peek at you. Besides, the scarf I gave you must smell like a snake's armpits. I haven't cleaned it for years now. It's more of a memory than an accessory. Uh, I didn't want to be rude, but it does smell funny. More like an aged sweaty scent. I'm sorry about that. To be honest, I prefer it over the smell of Adrian's blood in my clothes. Everything we talk about ends up remembering him. So, will you take off your clothes? We need to take advantage of the sun right now. If you wait too much, you'll probably get sick at night. I look down to the pond and see my grimy face and blood-stained clothes. Actually, I'll clean my clothes myself. Just go upstream and get us some fish. In that way, we don't lose too much time on unimportant stuff. Sure, you're right, kid. Just ask before coming back down here. Yeah, I already planned on doing that. When Baru leaves, I take off my clothes and dunk every piece under the water, soaking them as I stare at the dissipating blood. After a few rubs, the shirt's hue becomes a soft pink that I can't get rid of even rubbing it in a stone. The rest are easier to clean, and after that, I hang them over some bushes in the sun and go back to the pond. My fur is matted, grimy, and sticky. I feel like I've been inside an oil barrel for a week. And the smell? Ugh, it's like something died and I spent a week cuddling with it. I wish I had shampoo or soap. I think sand and some clay from the lake might help a little, but the first thing I'm doing when we get to civilization is taking a good, long, and cold bath with lots of shampoo, soap, and conditioner. As I'm rubbing the clay over me, I feel some sore spots, cuts, and a chip in my ear, remembering the moment that I doomed us. When I wash off, I don't feel sticky anymore and the earthy smell is kinda good and refreshing. I stay a little longer in the water and then leave to find a nice rock under the sun. After a good shake, I sat under the sun, almost lying on a large rock I found, and made sure it wasn't a grave this time. My body feels heavy and sore, especially my legs and paws. Everything out here isn't like what we thought it would be. I think we underestimated the world-ending catastrophe. Well, we grew up locked inside an underground facility, with only some shitty data and memories of what the outside looked like, so I can't blame us for imagining it would be all flowers and peanuts. But still, I wasn't ready for any of this, and I'm just out for what, four or five days? I didn't even go through the tip of it and it's already too much. Ugh, oh, I think I'd rather kneel over and die than spend another moment in a living hell like this one. No you don't, the next grave that will be dug in here is mine and no one else. Gah! I quickly hide behind the rock I was on. <laughs> there was a preview of, uh... Bram naked, so I, I, I'm gonna have to censor that. <laughs> I 
I told you to ask before coming back. I did. You didn't respond. But don't worry. I saw nothing. Sorry. I was a little absorbed in my thoughts. Anything I can help with? Also, here. Your clothes are already dry. He throws my clothes over the stone and turns his back to me. I put them on and get to his side. Thanks. Don't worry. And if there's anything I can do to help, just ask, kid. He messes up my hair and I instinctively sink my head between my shoulder and try to get his paw off by lightly slapping it. He chuckles and lets go. I don't think there's much to be done about anything unless you can turn back time and prevent the comet from passing over Earth. Well, not like what they tried to do. Huh, yeah. How could they fuck it up so much? Well, at least they managed to solve the problems with pollution, overpopulation, and hunger. I suppose there are roses among the thorns, right? I look at Barrow and he has a somber demeanor on his face. I miss the days we left behind on the flooded earth, the moon, the food, the cold nights my sister and I used to spend in my mom's bed. My father was never home, so we spent a lot of time with mom, but it feels like so long ago now. No, it's more like a made-up memory that you tell yourself just to find some comfort. It's real, I know it is, but it feels fake and unhinged from what reality is nowadays. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have joked about it. Kid, it's okay. We'll find happiness again, one day. My stomach makes some devilish noises, making Baro giggle. Come on, I'll prepare us some food.